hey guys so in the last video we created this ad block page now we need to integrate this ad block page on a plus button so let's do that first let me just queue the home parameter as a page attribute because in the page if a user is sign in then we are showing the welcome page if user is not sign in then we are showing the home page in, in the home page we have this plus button let me go on a home page here and in the home page we will have the floating action button so let me go there and a floating action button here we have a floating action button and in the floating action button we have this on press parameter so here we have to call that ad block page so let's call it you know that to call the ad block page i mean to navigate from one screen to the another screen we use the navigator so let me use the navigator navigator dot op context and here we have the push parameter in the push parameter we will pass the ad block page so what will happen when someone click on a plus button then we will go on a ad block page so let me use the material page route and in the builder first we will use the context as we are doing on another video also then we will call the ad block page so let me call the ad block page so basically what is happen in my site when i use this kind of thing like i use ad block and uh, i tap on ad block then automatically the ad block is imported over here so in your case if the ad block is not automatically imported please import the ad block page first then use over here on a floating action button so here when we click on this plus button we will go on a ad block page let me hit the save and let's see what will happen when i will click on a plus button so see when i click on a plus button i went to the ad block page now we need to add the functionality over here someone click on a cross button we need to go on a again in the home page so let me go on our ad block page in ad block page in a app bar we have this cross button so let me go on a cross button side so here we have app bar so in the app bar we have a leading in the leading we have a icon button here in the on press we don't have anything so let me just call the navigator dot pop so with help of navigator dot pop we will just go back to the home page screen so when i hit the save the cross button is gone due to that we need to assign some color over here let me assign the color colors dot black it will be good and you can see the cross button over here because i didn't assign the color property so that's set it away and uh, i was telling about the pop functionality of the navigator think about this tag and when you hit the push so the one layer of the page is added on a stack so in a home page when we use this navigator dot op constants dot push the one layer of the page is added on a stack and when we hit the navigator dot pop that layer is gone similar in a stack we use the push and pop thing we are using over here so when i will click on a cross button we will again go back on a home page that's nice when i will click on a plus button we will push a new page on a stack and when we click on a cross button we will pop the new uh, the new page from this stack so that's it and uh, next thing we will do is we will add the validator so inside the text form field we have a validator so we will first add the validator for the title so this is a title text form field let me add the validator for it you know the validator take a value and 
it return the error message so what will be the error message if the value is empty which means we don't have anything and we are hitting the submit button then we will give a error message title let me capitalize this title can't be empty okay and uh, that's it for uh, this thing we can add more validation for your case and we have to return null always if we don't want to so the error message and same thing the validator we will add inside this body parameter also let me go on a body parameter inside the body text form field we will add the validator and we will see that we will say that body can't be empty and yes we have a another type of validation is that if someone exhausted the hundred length of the title then we will queue an error on our title that so let me here add one thing is else value dot length is greater than 100 then return ok we have to add else if because we are adding a condition and we will return title length should be less than or equal to 100 as an error message okay that's it for the title and uh, body also it's good now what we have to do is we need to create a global form key as we are doing on a another page also so let me create a global form key and in the text form field we have to assign the controller of these two things also so let's add these three things we need two text edit controller for controlling this two text form field text edit controller so let me assign two text edit controller first one will be title let me initialize the text edit controller over here and uh, same thing we will do we'll just copy it and I will paste for the body and we need to assign the respect to text edit controller to the respect to text form field like this is a title we need to assign this text form uh, text edit controller inside the text form field of the title so here let me assign the controller and controller is title in the body text form field also inside the text form field we will use the controller and here we have the controller of body hit the save and another thing is we need to create a global key global form key if you remember on a sign in page also we created this global form key similarly we will do here also so let me go on our add block here we will create a form key same as here so let me just copy it global key that will handle the validation part okay so this global key I will assign here so before assigning here we need to wrap the list view into the another widget that is a form and in the form we have a key parameter we are doing the same thing on uh, another video also that to 
implement the validation we wrap the thing inside the form and we assign the global key with the help of this global key we will trigger that two validation part so that's it that part is done now the validation part and we have to implement the functionality of the add block we need to implement the functionality of this image speaker on this icon click so let me go on add block in add block we don't have a button property at this point of time what i will do is i will simply wrap this add block thing with another child and the child will be you know inkwell in the inkwell we have a property called on tap and inside the on tap we will implement logic so what will happen when someone click on a add block first we will do the validation then we will send the data to the rest api the rest api calling part will be done over here and uh, now let's implement a functionality for this thing as i told that someone will click on this icon then we will fetch the cover photo from the gallery so here in the title text form fill method inside the text form fill we added this prefix icon and here in the on press we are not doing anything let's implement something over here most of the thing i am showing over here is already covered in our create profile page like fetching the image from the gallery or doing the validation all this thing is completed on a create profile page so let's do the again and for the fetching the image from the gallery we need to implement a logic and we will implement a logic inside this method the method name will be take cover photo because we are taking a cover photo from the gallery and uh, after initializing it it will be a sync and await type because we are performing a io operation and you know that to fetch an image from the gallery we need to use the image picker and let's me create a new instance i mean the object of the image picker over here so we can use it and basically right now the package is not imported over here when i will click this image picker then the package is automatically imported so some of the viewer commented down that please show the importing part also so for my case when i will click on the any kind of widget then automatically the package is imported over here if, if that is not your case please import that package manually over here because without importing the package you can't use that thing so let me create an instance i mean the object for it the name will be the picker and uh, i will initialize it image picker and now we will use this picker object inside that take cover photo method the second thing is we need to initialize a picked file variable it is a type of file variable where we will store the image file as we did on the create profile page so we will first fetch the image from the gallery and store that image in this image file variable now let's do that inside the take uh, take cover photo method here let me just use the a uh, new variable called cover photo and in the cover photo first we will use the await and the picker with the help of picker we will get image in the get image we have to provide the source from where you want to get the image so the type of image source and the type is gallery we are fetching the image from the gallery so it will fetch the image from the gallery and store on a cover photo so after storing the image on a cover photo we will use the set state 
because we are using a stateful widget and we need to store that thing on an image file so i will set the state on image file and use this cover photo image here so basically it will store the image on the image file so that's why we are using the set state so after implementing this method let me call this take cover photo method inside this icon button so let me go on a title text form field over here and inside the text form field we have a prefix icon and icon button and here we have a on place so let me call that take cover photo method over here okay and i will hit the save and most of the thing i will click on this thing let me click over here then we went into the photos of the emulator so let me go on photos here we have one photo let me click this photo and we came back but we are not seeing anything because i didn't added any preview yet when we click on a preview then we can see that thing but let's add something to see the changes that we face the image from the gallery or not so what i will do that i will change this icon when we fetch the image from the gallery so for that what we have to do is let me just go on the top of this class and create a another variable called icon data so basically the this icon is a type of icon data so the name will be variable is icon photo i'm just using any random name and initially the value of this icon photo will be the same as we are using over here icons dot image so let me assign it over here and hit the save and use this icon photo instead of static icon which we are using over here so right now we i replace the static value of the icon with the icon photo and we will set this icon photo value in the take cover photo when we fetch the image so what will be the icon photo value when we fetch the image let put it simpler that icon dot check box so when we fetch the data i mean photo from the gallery this icon will be changed to the checkbox that we fetch the photo from the gallery and i will hit the save and i will just use the refresh so let me refresh the page and we will see the functionality okay and when i will click on a plus button when i will click on this image icon we will go on to gallery inside the gallery when i will use the camera and when i select it then automatically the icon is changed to the check box that we fetch the image from the gallery which means the video the goal of this video is fulfilled in in the next video we will implement a functionality on ad block but first we need to create a rest api for this image so let's concentrate on a rest api first then we will implement the logic of the submitting a blog with the help of this ad block button thank you all happy coding and see you on a next video